Black Friday is one of the most logistically challenging times of the year. And not just for our company, but companies all over the gun industry and in all kinds of industries. Now, lots of different companies see Black Friday as a you know, different kind of event. Some companies see it as a way of getting things off the books before the end of the year. Some companies see it as a way to just make a bunch of money. Uh, but some companies also see it as a way to serve customers. Now, this is where we try to see Black Friday. It's a way where you know, a lot of people generally around Black Friday just do it culturally. They start to save their money. They start thinking, I want to be buying things on Black Friday. So one thing that we try to do for our customers is by offering you know, high quality products and having a lot of products in stock, more on that later, that we can offer at a discount so that your money can go further. Uh, the thing that we've said for years is, hey, save some money on this and go spend it on ammo. Now with COVID and 2020, it's a little different. I mean, yeah, save money and you're going to be, you know, paying 60, 70 cents around for nine millimeter. But you can be saving that money, you know, when you go and buy things, at, buying things at discount to go spend on other things, you know, maybe later on that's night vision or maybe later on that's, you know, armor or something else. So we have a conversation at the beginning of the year and pretty much every year the discussion is why are we doing a Black Friday sale? Like what is the purpose behind this for T-Rex Arms as a company? Is it for the reasons that I said earlier or is it to truly serve the customer? So we sit around this table right here and we talk about it and we talk about it, you know, in other places yeah. around the shop. And then we make our decision on doing a Black Friday sale uh, based on those conversations, although it's generally the same every time and we, it's a little more solidified these days. Uh, but one of the big challenges for us is in order to truly serve the customer, when you do a Black Friday sale, you're making a promise to them. You're saying 15% off on holsters or, you know, surefires or, you know, whatever it happens to be. Well, if your product goes out of stock instantly on Friday, all of those people you just made a commitment to or a promise to for Saturday, Sunday, and Cyber Monday, well, you didn't fulfill that promise with those people. So one of the challenging parts of Black Friday is how deep do you stock your product? Do you stock it deep enough where you can make those promises and they hold true till Monday? Well, then you run into the risk of stocking too deep and now you have all that product on inventory before the end of the year. Because a lot of companies use Black Friday as a, well, we'll get rid of all this stuff, so we're not going to get taxed on it before the end of the year, blah, 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 blah. So what we try to do is we try to maximize our inventory using historical forecasts and you know what data that we have, which for this year has been very difficult with COVID and also our expansion, uh, but have enough product on hand that we can make that promise to you guys and fulfill it. Have it in stock until Monday at least. Uh, unless it's something crazy that we just can't get, you know, our hands on. There were some products we didn't have enough stock on, you know, this year that we didn't even discount because that would have been a real promise breaker right there because it would have sold out on Friday. So we only put things on sale that we knew we could really fulfill uh, to you guys, the customer, and have in stock, you know, through Monday and be able to get that out in a timely fashion. Now, how do we do this? We start preparing in January. So one of the challenges has been worker capacity and worker space. So one of the things that we did at the beginning of the year, oh, well, it was only the beginning of the year. Actually, yeah, no, it was, like, it was like four months in, I want to say, is a building came up for sale next door to us. We were able to acquire it, which is giving us a lot more space for shipping and inventory. But we just finished doing, this was actually hilarious, we conducted a move of our entire shipping department, with the exception of two stations for some holster stuff, over to the next building, and we did that a week before Black Friday. Now that's funny, you know, because Black Friday is like the most busy time for us of the entire year, and we conducted an entire building move for an entire department. So on this side, we have our main building, the one that you saw in our documentary, uh, which is where everything has been for the past year 10 months 11 months i thought it would be last like four years in there you know it didn't happen and now we have this building over here for shipping and inventory and we're expanding our manufacturing into this building into the space that shipping and inventory originally occupied so we have a new division I'll show that later uh, that that's you know moving into where the shipping was and this is where all the trucks and everything come now it's pretty awesome Okay, 
Okay, so. So back to what I was saying about preparing in January. So after Black Friday, we have big meetings generally where we talk about, you know, what went wrong. And every Black Friday, something goes wrong. We learn a new thing. This year we had some newsletter issues. There were some other site things, nothing too major. We're actually way ahead of schedule as far as like shipping goes. Some bottlenecks in manufacturing, but some of those we already expected. Uh, but like I was saying, we start to prepare for Black Friday in January. So we calculate how much inventory uh, we needed per, you know, how many users that we had or how many site users we had, our marketing platform, and we start to acquire product um, so that we can make promises to customer and some of the product we have to be acquiring way early, like in January and February. Um, Surefire isn't one of those vendors. Uh, we just have a lot of their stuff because it's important and sometimes it's hard to get. We got EOTEX and Trigicons, all kinds of stuff. But the bigger one, the bigger product that's hard, harder to get, and we learned this in 2019, we put Ragnaroks on sale, I think it was 15 or 20% off, might have been 15. But the issue was we ran out of the accessories for them before we ran out of the holsters. And we're not gonna run out of the holsters because we can manufacture those ourselves. And we were taking back orders on them because we were in control of you know, that product. But what we actually ran out of was the Safari Land hardware. So these blue pallets are all Safari Land UBLs and QLSs. So that when the customer uh, you know, comes to our site and they want to rag the rock, they want to save money, they actually can get the whole thing. They don't go to checkout and go, oh yeah, we don't have UBLs, we don't have QLSs, we don't have this thing. Now the issue with stocking uh, this particular product is it takes months and months and months and months in advance. So we had to start buying these back in January. And it looks like we still have some, which is great. I'd rather be overstocked than understocked, and you guys wouldn't be able to get stuff. Uh, but they are ripping into these, grabbing stuff, fulfilling your orders from Black Friday. It's a Tuesday, so we just finished Black Friday. Uh, we've got our big AAR. I've got to work on some data for the meeting tomorrow. Um, but we stock held steady for the Safari Land hardware that enabled people to get Ragnaroks on sale. That's something a lot of companies do is they like to do a lot of back ordering. Now the problem with back ordering, again, you're making a promise to customers and if you're working with companies that you don't have a good hold on, you know, how often they get you things, you know, or maybe it's a company that may get a government contract and they're gonna prioritize that for the military over, you know, the stuff you just promised to your customer, it could get pretty dicey. Uh, I've seen a lot of companies you know, do a lot of back ordering. I've been the victim of back ordering product from a company or even buying a product that I thought was in stock because they said it was in stock and then it was actually back ordered. Uh, that's not good service to customers. Uh, we're not a big fan of that business model. Uh, we don't do it with products that we don't make. You know, if it's a product that we make that and we have good supply and we can, you know, with certainty go, yep, we'll have those made within at least three weeks or four weeks or whatever. Uh, we let the customer know that, so we're promising, hey, here's the lead time for that. Yes, we can make it. Uh, that's the exception we have for back ordering. Uh, but when we have products like, you know, from other vendors, you know, EOTEX or whatever, uh, we don't know when we may get the next batch of those. Uh, and some of these companies are, you know, telling us months and months and months, you know, down the road uh, due to COVID and due to other things and just due to, you know, the market just being jacked up on everything um, that, hey, you know, you're not going to have this thing for months. One of these products that we have had trouble with over the years, uh, because we've had, we've had multiple vendors who've sold us plate carriers, um, is just not getting enough plate carriers to meet demand, especially this year. So we've been selling Hescos. There's, you can see a bunch of pallets here. Uh, this is all armor. These, I think these are 3810s. Um, L210s are still like going out of stock, and the 3810s are now, we're accumulating some, which is great, which we can <laughs> bundle with a new product. Um, but when we have a product that we can't stock very deep, we can't get good inventory on, we start to look at, well, how can we control some of the manufacturing of that ourselves? Uh, so what we have here, uh, our latest product, is our own plate carrier, which by now we'll have released um, as I'm filming this. I'm filming this and it's not out yet. And you guys don't even know about it because this has been a completely secret uh, marketing, no hype, no nothing. Uh, now you guys can see it. Uh, this is a product that we're ordering in the thousands, uh, which is far more than we've ever gotten from other vendors before, so that we can make a promise to you guys like, hey, you can buy this plate carrier for X amount of money. It will ship within a couple days. And when you go to our website, our goal is that it's always in stock. It's never out of stock, so whenever you need one, you can get it. 
And that's been a real big priority of the company for uh, this year. Uh, in previous years, we had to focus on other things, certain stability, certain, you know, uh, you know, marketing or other things like that. But, you know, 2020 for us, which is funny, is, you know, year of COVID. Um, but 2020 was a year for stability for us as far as, you know, getting some of these systems in place where we can, you know, fulfill our promises to customers. You know, better customer service where we respond to people same day, uh, shipping within, you know, one day or same day in some cases for retail items. It's not holsters. You know, holsters could still be a week or two or so. Uh, bringing our lead time down, you know, getting more machines, more capability in manufacturing. Um, those have become much bigger goals for T-Rex this year in uh, you know, serving customers through just the product themselves. Um, and I've had to put some marketing on the back burner because I've had to come in and f help focus on some of that as well. Or design a plate carrier so that we can actually get thousands of them and have more inventory for you guys so when you need one, you can get one. One of the biggest improvements we've been able to make, which is allowing us to conquer Black Friday, and we were actually able to send out some Black Friday shipments on Friday, which is pretty incredible. I don't think we've been able to do that any year prior to this one, is our new shipping system. So we moved into this building, and rather than taking our existing shipping system that we had, our shipping manager, Nora, who's been doing a lot of study in the realm of shipping and organization and whatnot, uh, actually wanted to put up a whole new system. So this is what is considered a zone picking. Uh, so essentially what we have are five different zones so far. Uh, of product. Now these aren't stocked too deep. We keep all the excess back here on the uh, large pallet racks. Uh, but basically what happens is we have this conveyor belt. Uh, orders get placed here at the top. So this is zone. I want to say this is alpha and echo is at the end or it's vice versa. And on the invoice it clearly says and when you guys uh, get your orders you'll see this at least as long as we're using paper invoices. You'll see E, A, F, all that good stuff. Or not F, not yet. But what that means is as the order starts here and moves its way down, they know the next place this order needs to go to get an item is Zone Charlie, which is down there in the middle. So the bin goes down to there, and when they're ready, it simply gets set on the conveyor belt, and this conveyor belt takes it all the way to shipping. And so if we come on down here, so we've got nylon goods are here, we've got thigh straps, S-TAC mag carriers, they've got their Black Friday invoices, which these are all starting at this zone right here, so they're probably not having to go down there for anything in particular. When one is done, just like this, it gets set on the conveyor belt and that will shoot straight down to shipping, who will then get it, ship it to where it's going, put it in the right box, et cetera, et cetera. Good example, uh, this order has a pack timer, which is in zone Delta, and then it's going to go down to zone Echo, which has the offset mount. So it's going to be on this little rack here it's going to get rolled on down when they're done in this section uh, they've got timers ready to go for other customers and then it will get what other items are in this section which if we check it this out we've got rmrs the pistol sights uh, scalar works mounts eotex uh, zero targets that go with our sites is something that we do for customers they get zero targets which is great uh, pec 15s app hill c's to be precise and then this is the last section. So as soon as it's gotten whatever it needs from here, let's say an RMR goes into the box, straight to the conveyor belt, and then it gets zipped around to shipping. Now the most fun part is you can set the speed on the conveyor belt so you can get them going even faster and just have them shooting out. But I'm not, I'm not doing that. So. so as you can see down here, they come on off, ready to go. They stop here for this shipping station, or this one right here. If another one comes in like this one and another one, they will eventually push bins on down to the next shipper. So as this is filling up with orders, as you can see, coming in nice and efficiently, we're not having to move them by hand. We get to rely on these lovely rubber robots, basically, to actually push everything and feed everything down to the shippers. We've got five stations on this side. We've got five on this side. The reason they're flipped, I asked our shipping manager, why are they flipped? It's so there's consistency. Where you're always grabbing from the line with your right hand and you're placing with your right hand. And I was like, oh, that's super cool. Consistency like in shooting, would have never thought of that. I probably would have had them all facing one direction so you can stand at the end and see everyone. That's why I'm not in charge of this department. So, they come down. We've got a few shipping stations not being used right now. There's a few people that are out. 
and everything gets processed. And then when it's done, so here's a lovely box of slings, Ranger Green. When they're done, there's two. It's a two conveyor belt system, uh, it's tiered or whatever you want to call it. So orders that are getting shipped are on the bottom, and they get fed to everyone. And then when it's actually done, the shipper places it on the top, where it comes on down. And then goes into this massive box. And then they go out those doors, and they fill up. Here's one right here, ready to go. And then these get filled up as well. So our shipping efficiency in general with this new system has gone up a lot. We set a new record yesterday. We set a new record the day before. And I'm pretty sure we set a record on Friday. Nora, did we set a shipping uh, a shipping record on Friday? Each day? Yeah, yeah. So Friday, and which Black Friday helps too, but yes. Oh, oh there's another one right here. Oh, this is radio. Oh yeah, I didn't see that. Fun. Now, the people most responsible for making this Black Friday move smoothly are the people in this area right here, shippers as well. This is Nora Rodriguez. She is the shipping manager and she's the brains behind the zone picking and this whole new shipping system and everything that is going on. So if you got your order super fast in the past few years, I would say, especially right now with everything going on the way it is, she's the one to thank. So, yeah. The next person who's most responsible for our inventory, how many things in stock, so when you actually go to our website and it says in stock and you can buy the thing and then it goes out super fast like we talked about like we showed is Brian Evans who's our new procurement officer steward steward thank you I wasn't sure what the uh, title was so question for you that I'm sure people are interested about what has been the hardest product this year to stock or let's say a few just throw out a few products Law tactical folders. Law tactical folders. Nearly impossible. Nearly impossible. Uh, and what else? They're not counting anything that we're getting manufactured by other people that we don't talk about. <laughs> that's been the main one that's been difficult. The rest of them are hit and miss. So yeah. Sometimes they feel available and sometimes they don't. Like EOTEX. Like EOTEX. What about Aimpoint? Have they been fine? Aimpoint has been pretty steady. That's good. Yep. Uh, RMRs and SROs? Pretty steady. Pretty steady. Yep. Surefire? Your fire, very steady. Mod light, very steady. And S tacks, very steady too. Yes. Um, so yeah, so most products have been good. The law folders have actually been the hardest product to get. I think most of that is people wanting to finally run truck guns that they can fold up and put in the car, yes. which has been a recent development for this year for sure. So. Right. And they come in spurts and they sell out almost instantly. Yes. Did you get the note that I needed one on our next order? I think you're up to three. Now. Oh, I'm up to three. Okay, well, I'm, I need three. They're actually not for me, though, so, yeah. I need three. So, anyway, thanks for everything. This yep. is Brian. He's in charge of everything being in stock. So, when it's not, you know who to blame. <laughs> actually, usually, that's my fault. Uh, customer service receiving are also in this area, so we have a lot of office space uh, to help support everything going on over here. Um, accounting and media and marketing and everything's over in the next building. Um, as well as some uh, admin and logistics and whatnot. Uh, but over here, you got the CS guys hammering through pictures and videos from customers talking about, you know, asking about products they're about to order. Uh, we also get a lot of questions on things we don't sell. Uh, one of the guys was just asking me about another armor product someone was asking us about, which we haven't tested. So our response to them is, well, we haven't tested it, so we don't have much to say on that. Um, plus, we're a little biased when it comes to armor. We sell Hescos for a reason. So the people ask us those questions like, hey, what about this holster company or that? And it's like, well, that's like we're a holster company. We're, maybe we're not the best person to ask you know, that question because of our potential bias. Um, but there's all kinds of questions that we get, and we try to answer every single one. Unless you ask about shoes they wear. We don't have so, you got a phone call? Nope. No. Uh, this is Kyle Bradshaw. He is the customer service manager and responsible for you guys getting your emails super fast and uh, running this department. He has been, uh, earlier we were talking over some of the numbers for Black Friday, looking at comparisons and whatnot. And uh, how has the customer service been uh, for this year and the workload and how have things <laughs> been different compared to previous years? Because you've been here now for four Black Fridays, three Black Fridays? Three, three Black Fridays. Three Black Fridays. Yeah. Um, it has been 
essentially from the CS standpoint, Black Friday all year. Um, with yes. the first COVID and then all the riots and everything else. Which actually made this Black Friday a lot easier to deal with. Because you were prepped. Because we were prepped and ready to handle the influx of orders. And you had how many you have how many people now? Six uh, five, six. Six to seven people. Six to seven people working every single day. That helps. But we still no. don't take phone calls. No. No. Just write an email. It's better than writing anyway. Team at T Rex Arms. Yes. It's be- it's better in writing. It's yeah. easier. I know some people don't like it because it's they think it's less efficient. In some ways, depending on the question, maybe it is less efficient. In my opinion, email is the way. Absolutely. Especially with how technical some of the questions are that we get mm-hmm. about certain products. Or I also know you guys um, have sometimes sent videos and or lots of links. We'll send videos. We'll send pictures. We'll send links. Can't do that on a phone call yeah. very easily. Mm-hmm. Um, and if we do wind up talking with someone on the phone, Every single time we wind up sending you an email with a list of links. Yeah. So, so we end up emailing anyway. Yeah. So that's why we're not doing phone lines. Um, I know some companies in, in the industry do that or get a company in India. Uh, we're never going to do that. Uh, to take phone calls for us, we're always going to have professionals over here who do gun stuff. We do range days. Um, oh, same we, professionals. <laughs> I say professionals. Um, and then some of the guys over here also do a lot of shooting on their own time and researching gear on their own time, which obviously assists in the job here. So um, it's been cool to see that the customer service workload, I can see some of the emails right here, has been uh, minimal with this Black Friday, or you guys have just been able to handle it better. Not minimal. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's been a pretty normal Black Friday. It's increased though. the same but, amount from like last year and previous years. Yeah. You guys were just more prepared for it, yeah. and our content was more prepared for it. Mm-hmm. So that's good. Planning. So thank you. Thank you. It's not all us, it's you guys too. <laughs> so, it's good stuff. But now we can head over to the next building and we can actually look at the manufacturing that's going on that is supporting all of this over here and some of the other stuff going on. So now we're over in the manufacturing side and this is where we can have a little more control over the products that we're putting on sale because we make them ourselves. So here's some of the UBLs and QLSs that are ready to go over there for hard wearing. Just a little example. So that's what we have to stock pretty deep starting in January. So this whole side of this building is all manufacturing. Probably looks a little familiar from that last video. So we've got CNC on this side. And then we have the actual crafting of the holsters all on this side. Now there's a few bottlenecks that we're trying to solve, like buffing and some other things. Um, but for the most part, it's still pretty efficient. We get people's orders out nice and fast. Uh, some of the lead times are extremely low. And then we're also just stocking our quick ship holsters and our Ragnaroks um, pretty much every day, um, every couple days. So the orders come in, all the Black Friday orders, the stacks of them, we printed those on white paper. Usually we use color paper for uh, different, if you look up here, we have different color paper for when we print invoices. And so we have basically two weeks of data. So when we, basically after like two weeks, we can go back and go, all right, we need to hit all the purples because those are two weeks old. Um, but for Black Friday, we use white paper. So we can just, we know like, oh, these are all the Black Friday orders. We got to, you know, get on them. So the orders come in this way. They either go to CNC for production or they go all the way down to custom. Let's check that out. This area is for the, the weird customs, like the left-handed FNX 45s, the wrong-handed M9 whatevers. Or, so we still have this department in here to handle some of those weird requests or some of the holsters that we just don't make enough of to justify automating or say more automating uh, with our CNC machines and with our vacuum forming. So we've got four CNC routers here that are cutting through all these holsters. We've got, you know, basically four stations. So four guys are working full time here. One per machine, one per uh, little vacuum form section that has two. And they're just running through holsters in here. Back to custom. All Black Friday stuff. So we got these guys back here, our most experienced crafter, Josiah, back here on the left. He, uh, he's been doing it. He's been here the longest as far as in this you know, area. He's also in holster development now, three days here, two days over there. Um, but he, he absolutely crushes it. So there's the sandy rock right there. I think 
that's an LC9 or something. I don't know. So a gun that we don't make enough holsters for to justify taking over there. So as you can see, they've got three racks in here ready to go, full of CNC holsters. So all these see is the edges getting buffed. They come off the CNC machines are really sharp. So check this out. Actually, we've got four buffing stations here. It's one of the bottlenecks that we have. But the CNC machines are really efficient. You know, it's a robot. We got a, a human running the robot. It's great. But then the buffing side, it's a little harder to automate. It's a little harder to get that going. You know, really efficiently. So we've got four stations here. So ass crafters do things, and it piles up. Here comes the van for cleaning. They can basically jump on there and get to buffing. So this is the cleaning station. And as you can see, he's got quite a bit. He's got to just get all this dust out. This section's a little quieter. This is the bending section. So I'll kind of remember how we said, holsters start their orders that work all the way around. They get CNC'd. They get custom, however they're made, depending on what mold the gun you know, is for, and then it works its way through the system. So one of the last you know, sections is bending. So when we get our Mars carriers and we have these made, they come flat. So we've got to actually bend them ourselves. Uh, this is actually a product that we work with another company on, uh, as far as some of the technology and whatnot. And we have to buff them ourselves, bend them ourselves, quality control them ourselves, assemble them ourselves. Uh, so they have to come through here and get bent. So this station right here does sidecars. We have to make a lot of the, the tooling here ourselves. That one is sidecars. Uh, that's Raptors and or uh, Ragnaroks. Actually, it's probably just Raptors. And then that side over there is, uh, is uh, of course, that's Ragnaroks as well. And this is one of those, another one of those kind of bottlenecks where it's a little harder to automate than just getting a CNC machine and throwing a bunch of code and nerd stuff into it. So we've got a couple bottlenecks in, ma in manufacturing that are a little harder to you know, increase the efficiency. Um, the guys in here are super fast as it is, and it's just figuring out, you know, what kind of tooling can we make, or what systems can we implement to make everyone more efficient, which alleviates stress, gets you your order sooner, and just overall better experience for everyone. It's already pretty efficient, but we want to make it better, always, everything better. Oh, and there's one more section you guys haven't seen yet. Let's go check it out. There's a couple. Uh, yeah, we'll blur everything. There's too much secret stuff. Nah, we'll, blur, we'll blur everything away. Yeah, we actually uh, have a bunch of uh, holsters and molds that say do not photograph on them. Because, because. Don't look in there. <laughs> So, what, how's Black Friday for you? How's it been? Oh, so Black Friday for me is actually super easy. I think every Black Friday until now, I have had to make a bunch of holsters myself, usually uh, usually at night after those guys are done. And it could still happen, but it's not looking like I have to do that this time. Uh, we are on top of stuff, they are on top of stuff enough. Planning went smoothly enough that uh, the, uh, the bottleneck is in bending, and I'm not allowed to bend. Like, I am prohibited from bending. Uh, is, this, is there some in uh, buffing still? There's buffing all right right now. Um, I mentioned it earlier, the buffing. I think, but, well, I'm also prohibited from buffing, so that works out well. I've been, I've been prohibited from buffing since, uh, since before I started working here. <laughs> Did I do that? No. I uh, so I came in on a Black Friday before I worked at the rest of oh! the And I made, like, uh, 10% seconds. Oh, yeah. No, I do remember bad. that. I do remember that. <laughs> real bad. Yeah. Getting getting Black Friday <laughs> help on a thing that requires a lot of training doesn't always work. Yeah. So, on holsters. That was five. seven years ago or so. I think I'm five. Yeah. Five years ago. I'm still banned. So. Well, it's yeah. fine. But yeah, a couple bottlenecks over there. Um, but again, we're looking for ways. I know you and Judd are looking for ways to make them more efficient. We, we did a bunch of great. stuff last week and the week before and the week before that that really sped up a ton of stuff. And we didn't even get that across all the machines, but 
we're going to do like 30% speed increase on all the machines on every holster probably next week. Oh, next week? Yeah. We already, we already have that on one machine. We'll have that Which is funny ones. because we may actually be pretty caught up by then on Black Friday. We won't even necessarily need the efficiency for Black Friday. But the or, problem is it just takes it takes me a lot of work to, to build that efficiency in the sure. So I didn't quite get it done before. Yeah. I'll wait until they're less busy. Come in and make them. Yeah. Yeah. It's I on like my it. list. Well, that's cool. likely to happen. We're going to show them the secret department. Oh, well, never mind. We get to show the secret department. Not there. I don't get to see this, but later. But another division we stood up, so kind of going back to what I was saying, with not being able to get inventory or not being in control of, you know, with of certain products with certain vendors, we decided this year, and it's been kind of a secret project for the past year for obvious reasons, is we're actually standing up our own nylon division. Nylon division. Nylon division. <laughs> Our own sewing department, and that's what we have right here. It's actually moving over to where uh, shipping originally was, have a little more room to expand, and they're actually manufacturing a couple different products for us, so that we can be in a you know a little more control and have understanding of like when materials are coming in, when we can expect to have things to put on the website, what we can promise to customers. We did make, I made a pretty big goof earlier this year, I'm talking about the chest rig before I was supposed to. Well, actually, I was told it was okay, and then we ran into a massive uh, material issue with the elastic. Uh, a lot of the mills and a lot of the just materials manufacturing companies are having issues um, making enough stuff for the demand, because sewing is going through the roof, uh, I've talked to some guys, it's very similar to the early GWAT years as far as demand, and we're seeing some of that with sewing. So we had some issues getting material, getting the right material, mistakes, recalls, and stuff like that, which has caused us to push the chest rig back um, a couple times so far, two or three times. But we're right on the verge of launching it, as you all will see, and they've optimized the process, and it's, it's pretty awesome. I don't know a lot about sewing, but I think it's great. So here's one of their, this is one of the pieces uh, for the chest rig itself this is the back panel so they create it in different pieces and then they eventually assemble it and sew it all together so this has the two d-rings for the rear straps and this is the velcro flap for the uh, cummerbund of the entire system so you can adjust sizing and they produce hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these and these are actually getting ready for they made all these beforehand they're going to be making the uh, cummerbund sections um, here in a little bit remember, after where i put things like they're having a meeting right now. We'll go and keep it. It's a little small, but we're working on making it bigger. So all pre-cut pieces. This is our uh, tourniquet carrier. It's all pre-cut. I don't know how this will. I don't. I don't know how sewing like production cells work, but uh, it's very cool. <clears throat> so this is the, the clean side, the quiet side. Every time I walk through the door, I feel like I'm in a library. So, like I like I said, the orders start here. These are all of our printers and our paper, quite a bit. So we print invoices, these are all the manufacturing ones, so for you know holsters, holster orders, things like that. And then they proceed down the giant horseshoe, and eventually they end up in here, once they're done, in the hardware section. So you can see a lot of the Black Friday orders, the, the white pieces of paper, are here already getting hardwared. Now a lot of those are probably Ragnaroks. Uh, these are holsters that we stock, ready to go. And when a customer orders them, all we have to do is add the accessories. So the UBL, the QLS, whatever they order. What most customers don't realize is when they add one of those accessories to their order, we assemble it for them. So they get it and they're like, oh, it already has the stuff screwed onto it. Most companies don't do that. But it's something we wanted to do to further serve the customer. Um, it also, you know, some customers do not know how the accessory even works. And so it saves them time trying to figure it out once they get it or maybe improperly setting the holster up. So we go ahead and do that for them. Um, they still have to set their attention on the holster, but we do fit test every 
uh, every holster with a real gun. Um, that safe right there has every gun for every holster that we make in it. Um, Shadow 2s, just weird stuff, 2011s, all kinds of stuff. So they're fit testing on real guns on every holster. Uh, so they're in the process of hardwaring all of these, the Ragnaroks. Uh, and then we have two shipping stations here. I think they're talking about doing another one just for the Black Friday stuff because it looked like we had a little bottleneck right there. Um, so then once these are ready, so this rack right here, so it's got its finished Ragnarok with the QLS. Then this moves over to the two shipping stations uh, to then get shipped out. So here's one right here. Orders get basically moved over to the shipping computer. They get put on this rack, goes to the double doors, and then USPS runs over and grabs it, or UPS or DHL, whichever, depending on the, you know, the package and where it's going, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's a, you know, it's a few. It's not the only amount of bragging rocks. There's, there's more. Although some of the bins are looking a little empty, but for the most part, we still have stock. MNP X300. So that's probably um, 18, 20 of these suckers ready to go. Fit tested, folded, ready to rock, ready to get the accessories added. And now to show you Charles and Chad's lair. So now we're in the media room. Now. For Black Friday, media has some things to do beforehand, but during the sale, we actually don't have a whole lot going on specifically for Black Friday. Uh, Black Friday prep for the media team, which I'm the marketing director, um, there's a little bit involved there, and there's you know coming up with data on, hey, here's what the sales expectations and the forecast, blah, blah, blah. But we do that, remember, like way early in the year, and I was giving them projections once we had more data on where the year was going back in July, where it's like we're seeing this much growth every month, so we're going to have this much up to this point, so we can expect Black Friday to do at least this. My prediction was we're going to see less of an explosion on Black Friday because it's been a Black Friday all year starting March. Uh, and that prediction was correct. We actually saw less of an explosion effect uh, that we had actually seen in previous years. Part of that's also we didn't put a ton of stuff on sale. If we had put everything on our site on sale, it would have been a bigger explosion. But the fact of the matter is people have been spending money all year in preparation for possible events or events happening up north. Um, so they didn't have to buy things on Black Friday or maybe they couldn't buy things on Black Friday. So that prediction held... Uh, which I was really happy about. I still have to pull the numbers, but watching it as it happened, that's uh, that's how it went. So Charles here is working on the, uh, what are you working on? What you got? Working on the um, AC1 video. Oh yeah, AC1 which YouTube at this video. point you guys will have already seen. Um, so literally this product, the funny part was we were <laughs> trying to launch this around Black Friday. Uh, didn't work out, you know, some of the inventory, and it gives us a little more time to finesse this uh, YouTube video, which is great. Um, now I'm breaking the fourth wall and saying YouTube. Oh no. oh no. But uh so yeah. So the so so the marketing and media team, we weren't working so much on Black Friday. We were actually working on product prep for the chest rig and the plate carrier and some other stuff around Black Friday. But we don't have to work on Black Friday marketing that much, thankfully. We don't have to do like special videos for it. One of the most shocking things about Black Friday this year for us is as I was I came in on Friday, so sale hit Friday at uh, midnight. Well, so Thursday at midnight, Friday. Um, I always get mixed up by that. And there were already orders going out that day for Black Friday. Um, the team was just in there just crushing it, shipping, and you know the Ragnarok assembly team and everything. And um, I don't think we've ever had a Black Friday where we were actually shipping Black Friday orders on Black Friday. Um, and the, the other thing was, you know, people weren't like freaked out. There wasn't you know, crazy stress levels here or anything. And even today over there at shipping, like it's not like the entire shipping line was packed with people. And when I first saw that uh, yesterday, because I, I came in yesterday, I was like, what's going on? Did we not get a lot of sales or because I'm used to like panic because especially when I used to actually work here in the facility, like in manufacturing and stuff. Because I remember the Black Friday panic because Black Friday is generally speaking a month of sales within three days, pretty much. So there's a lot of, you know, responsibility on, you know, serving the customers who have ordered and getting their stuff out quick. And so you're adding that on to your existing workload that you already have, which back then for us was like a four week lead time. So now you're adding a whole nother month of another four weeks of lead time, uh, five weeks of lead time, whatever it is onto that. 
Um, but there wasn't those stress levels. And I thought, well, something's wrong. But what it is, is we had proper planning beforehand. Um, shipping was able to develop their system over there to be more efficient. Uh, our manufacturing has been more efficient. We have, you know, more people on the line. Um, we've got very effective managers going about what they're doing and, and managing everyone. And we're actually crushing Black Friday and exceeding our expectations. So not having the crazy stress levels this year and actually getting stuff out like on Friday and getting stuff out this week um, is a big win for us. And we're definitely going to be talking about that and um, basically going, what did we do this past year that enabled that? Because that's the same thing we got to do in 2021. Um, and it was very difficult this year because we didn't know what it was going to be. This year's been very tricky. I know for other manufacturers and companies as well with heightened demand and then a slump. We saw a huge demand in March. There was a little bit of a slump, I want to say, in April. So then it's like, ooh, like what's going to happen? Is there now a full slump? Are we going to have a recession? And then all of a sudden it was, you know, uh, Black Friday again in May and then all the way until now. It's been insane. And most companies can say the same thing, especially like ammunition and people like that. Um, but that's probably the most shocking thing about Black Friday this year was just it really hasn't seemed like Black Friday because all of our planning was done effectively beforehand. Our projections are, you know, getting a whole other building. If we didn't have that building, it would have made things very difficult, fitting everything in here um, with all the extra inventory we have coming in um, and then cramming everyone in here. That would have made things difficult. But purchasing that building, you know, way ahead of time, moving it over and moving everyone over a week in advance. Um, has resulted in success. So this Black Friday has been great for us. There were still some mistakes. There were still some hiccups. There's still some things we're going to take, we're going to build on, we're going to learn from, so that next year when Black Friday hits in 2021, we'll be able to overcome those problems and those challenges and ultimately serve our customers more effectively. Thanks so much for watching. I, uh, it's been fun. I never got in.